Hi everyone, welcome to our course on Awareness Kit in the HMS ecosystem. Throughout this course, we will answer the following questions What is Awareness Kit? What are the advantages of Awareness Kit? And what are the capabilities of Awareness Kit? First, let's see what Awareness Kit is. Awareness Kit helps you obtain situational information of users, including time, location, user behavior, weather, ambient light, and headset status. Using Awareness Kit, your apps can better perceive the situational information of your users, helping you provide them with a better product experience. With the time awareness capability, Awareness Kit tells you a current time of a user. For example, the day of a wig, whether the user needs to work or is on holiday, whether the current time is in the morning, noon, evening, or late at night, and the sunrise and sunset time of each day. The location awareness capability tells you the longitude and latitude of a user. You can preset a geofence by specifying coordinates and latitudes to receive a notification whenever a user enters or leaves the geofence. The Kate's Behavior Awareness Capability lets you identify the behavior of users, such as walking, running, sitting in a vehicle, cycling, and uh, staying still. The Ambient Light Awareness Capability helps you perceive ambient light. You can preset an intensity value of the ambient light as a barrier. The Weather Awareness Capability provides you with the weather information of a user's location including the temperature, humidity, wind direction, wind power, and UV light intensity. Finally, the handset status awareness capability helps you identify whether the user's phone is connected to a headset, which may be a wired or Bluetooth headset. Awareness Kate provides these capabilities for you through two types of APIs. The first type of APIs is called Capture. Through this APIs, you can obtain a capture of time, location, headset, and weather. For example, Awareness Kit can use the capture to tell you whether a user's headset is connected. The second type of APIs is called Barrier. You can preset some scenarios for which you want to be notified. For example, you can register a barrier in advance to receive a notification when a user's headset is connected and they start walking. Capabilities of Awareness Kit, including time, behavior, headset, location, ambient light, and beacon, can be widely used in various app scenarios. For example, if your app is a music or video app, you can recommend a music or video to users based on the current time, whether it is a holiday and user behavior. If your app is a shopping app, you can recommend the services available and a business done to users based on whether they have entered the specified business zone and whether they are on holidays. For travel apps, you can recommend travel information to users based on their travel plans, weather conditions, and holiday information. Let's take a music app as an example. Using Awareness Kit, your music app can bring a new experience to users. For example, if a user connects a headset to the phone, early in the morning, and the weather is good, you can recommend a lively music playlist to the user. If the user goes for a run in the morning, you can recommend it up-tempo music to help the user move faster. If the user running pace slows down, you can recommend it some music suitable for relaxation and stretches after exercise. You can preset a geofence to start playing energetic music when a user arrives at their gym and begins to work out. As the night falls, the user drives home after work. You can recommend some the music based on driving status at night time so the user can relax. What are the advantages of Awareness Kit? First, the time, behavior, ambient light, weather, and other capabilities free you from the time-consuming task of learning about all of the APIs needed to develop these capabilities. Second, these capabilities can be combined to optimize recommendations. 
you can set combination conditions for geofence in different scenarios. For example, when a user walks near a specified geofence in the early morning on a weekend, you will be notified that your preset conditions are met. You can then conveniently obtain the combination result. The second part is that we can provide more accurate awareness effects thanks to Huawei underlying hardware chips. Awareness kit features industry-leaning performance, accuracy, and power consumption when working with our service UIs. Let's review the capabilities that Awareness Kit can provide for you. With the time capability, Awareness Kit helps you obtain the time of user's current location, including the day of the week and whether the user is on a holiday. In addition, the time and holiday information covers most countries and regions around the world. It is updated in real time on the cloud to ensure that you can obtain the latest and most accurate time when calling Awareness Kit. With the location capability, Awareness Kit helps you obtain the longitude and latitude of a user current location. You can preset a geofence that you will receive a notification when conditions are met. In addition, we are continuously improving the location accuracy. With the behavior capability, Awareness Kids helps you obtain the current behavior of the user, including walking, running, cycling, or being still. With the beacon capability, you or merchants can install Bluetooth beacons, Bluetooth devices, in store or other places in advance. With a user with a mobile phone is close to the Bluetooth beacon, Awareness Kit detects the approaching so that you can recommend a service to the user. Awareness Kit's headset capability supports 3.5mm headsets, Type-C headsets, and most Bluetooth headsets in the market. With the ambient light capability, Awareness Kit helps you obtain the current light intensity value or satellite barriers based on the light intensity. Next, let's move on to the HMS Core practice cap. In this part, you will learn how to integrate and call Awareness Kit. The integration guide consists of three parts, which are Awareness Kit Demo, Awareness Kit Integration Preparations, and Integration Procedure. First, let's start with the Awareness Kit Demo. This is a demo app developed based on Awareness Kit. The demo uses six capabilities provided by Awareness Kit. Time, ambient light, Geofence, weather, headset, and behavior. How are the capabilities of Awareness Kit called in the demo? Now, let's move on to the integration preparations. It included six steps. These steps are registering with Huawei Developer and creating an app, creating a project in Android Studio, introducing the Awareness SDK in the Build Gradle file, configuring necessary permissions in the Manifest file configuring obfuscation scripts for your app, and dynamically applying for sensitive permissions required by the API and the code. For details about the six steps, please refer to guides on Huawei Developer. On this website, click the Develop menu and select HMS Core. Then, scroll down the HMS Core page and click the Awareness Kit card. On the Document page of Awareness Kit, you can click View Documents to view a brief introduction, detailed API references, and a sample code of Awareness Kit. Next, let's see how to integrate Awareness Kit can call its APIs. Here, the Time Capture API is used as an example to describe the data flow of Awareness Kit. When you can call the Time Capture API, Awareness Kit in your app will obtain the time zone, timestamp, and geographical location of user device and upload the data to the cloud. The cloud calculates the semantic information for the current time based on the data and returns the information to the user device. The semantic information includes the time segment of the day and whether the current day is a holiday or work day. After obtaining the information, the user device caches it and returns it to you. Next, let's see what is the geofence capability of Awareness Kit. First, let's watch the demo video on the right to get to know how the Awareness Kit geofence works. The blue circle is the geofence set in the demo app. When a user with a mobile phone enters the geofence, 
the demo app detects the user in the GeoFan Throw Awareness Kit, and then push a notification to the user. Now that we have completed the demo video, let's see how to implement related code. To use the GeoFan's capability of Awareness Kit, your apps requires the permission to not obtain accurate location of the user device. You need to declare the permission in the manifest file. After declaring the permission, create a geofence. You can use the location barrier class to create a geofence of the state, enter, or exit type. For example, to create a state type geofence, you need to pass four parameters. The first two parameters specify the latitude and longitude of the geofence center. The third parameter indicates the geofence radius. And the last parameter specifies the stay duration of a user in the geofence. If the user stays in the geofence for the specified duration, the status of the geofence changes to true. Now that we have learned about the state type geofence, it is easy to understand the inter and exit type geofences. The inter and exit type geofences are used to detect the user behaviors of entering and leaving the geofences. After creating a geofence, you need to register it with the awareness kit for it to take effect. The procedure is as follows. Create a barrier update request object, construct the object in builder mode, and call the add barrier method to add a geofence. Three parameters are required. The first one is the geofence label which is the string used to uniquely identify a geofence. You can search for or delete a geofence by its label. The second parameter is the geofence that you just created. The third parameter is pending intent. That needs to be triggered when the geofence status changes. Your app can detect the geofence status change through pending intent. Take an inner type geofence as an example. When a user enters the geofence, the geofence status changes from false to true, which triggers pending intent. In this example, pending intent sends a broadcast, and you can define a broadcast receiver to receive the broadcast. And parse the intent by using the barrier status extract method to obtain the geofence status. Go back to the registration process. After constructing the barrier update request object, you can obtain a geofence client through awareness get barrier client and call the update barriers method to import the constructed barrier update request. Now the registration process ends. The geofence registration result is returned in asynchronous callback mode. You can add a listener for the task to obtain the registration result. In addition to GeoFence APIs, Capture APIs are available for the location capability to obtain the current longitude and the latitude of a device. Compared with the GeoFence APIs, Capture APIs are much simpler to call. You only need to obtain the Capture client through awareness get Capture client and then call the get location method. The results of Capture API are returned in a synchronous callback mode. Therefore, you need to add a corresponding listeners. For example, if you listen to the success response, you can obtain the current longitude and latitude of the device by rewriting the all success method. You are advised to add the listening for the failure response, so you can know the code when the API fails to be called. Now, let's move on to the behavior identification capability. In the demo video on right, the user in the video is just in static state. After the user walks around with a mobile phone, the demo app identifies that the user is walking through a awareness kit and updates the corresponding card information. To use the behavior identification capability of awareness kit, you need to obtain the behavior identification permission. Behavior identification involves capture APIs and barrier APIs. Similar to the geofence capability, you need to create a barrier before using the behavior identification capability. You can use the behavior barrier class to create a barrier for behavior identification. 
take the cabin type barrier for behavior identification as an example. The input parameters of the barrier are the types of behaviors you want to perceive. When a user performs any behavior of the past type, the barrier status changes to true. For example, if you pass the static or walking state as the input parameter, the barrier status changes to true when a user is in static state or walking state. After creating a behavior identification barrier, you still need to register it with a weirdness key. The registration method is similar to that of registering a geofence and will not be talked about here. The method of calling a capture API for behavior identification is almost the same as that of calling a capture API in the location capability. The difference is that after the capture client is obtained, the get behavior method is called, and the return result is also obtained by listening to the asynchronous callback. Next, let's see the ambient light awareness capability of awareness kit. The demo app can detect the change in the ambient light intensity around the device through awareness kit and update the ambient light card information. The ambient light barrier is created using the ambient light barrier class. Take the above type barrier as an example. The barrier status changes to true only when the ambient light intensity is greater than the input value, which is in lux. After creating a barrier, you need to construct a barrier update request and register it with awareness kit for it to take effect. In addition to the awareness capability of a single barrier, awareness kit provides a composite API of barriers. Through the composite API, you can logically combine barriers of any type. Let's look at the code example. Through the awareness barrier and API, you can obtain the status of a combination barrier by passing the behavior identification barrier and ambient light barrier. The status of the combination barrier is obtained by performing and logic operation on the status of the two barriers. In this example, the combination barrier status changes to true only when the user is walking and the ambient light intensity is greater than 5000 lux. Next, let's see how to delete a barrier. Similar to barrier registration, you need to create a barrier update request object. The difference is that the delete barrier method is called when this object is constructed. You can delete a barrier in either of the following ways. One, pass the barrier label. For example, if enter location barrier label is passed, the geofence that the user enters is deleted. 2. Pass penny intent. If M penny intent is passed, all barriers associated with penny intent will be deleted. In this example, all the three barriers are deleted. After barrier update request is constructed, you can obtain the barrier client and pass barrier update request to delete the barrier. Finally, let's look at the headset status awareness capability of awareness kit. By calling only one API, you can detect the connection status of both wired and Bluetooth headsets, which is more convenient and simpler than the native Android API. The method of calling the barrier and capture APIs of the headset awareness capability is similar to that of the preceding capabilities. For details, please refer to the development documents of Awareness Kit on Huawei Developer. I believe that you can easily use Awareness Kit after completing this course. You can visit the Huawei Developer website to view other capabilities are not introduced in this course. That's all for this course. Thank you for watching.